gather together and be part of God's family and experience the warmth of his love and his welcome today. Uh, As you can tell, we don't have a piano today, but we do have a little band. (laughs) Hooray! God is good, isn't he? So we're just going to acknowledge that and we're going to steal our hearts and our minds together as we come into his presence this morning. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of this new day. We thank you that you called us and welcomed us into your family and you bind us together in love, in the love of Christ. And we pray that as we gather together in your name, the warmth of your love will fill our hearts and will spill over into the community that we're part of that the warmth of the love of Christ will transform us and transform all those whom we meet. Amen. Amen. Now this week, uh, we've got uh, Lieutenant Colonels Anne Florence and Massimo. They're leading our worship with us. We're trying to bring variety into our Advent season. And we're really glad that they agreed to come and lead us this morning. But before we hand over to them today, we're going to light our Advent candles. And as I read the Advent readings, I've invited patients to come and light our Advent candles for us. Fire burns. It hurts. It can destroy. But fire also gives warmth and light. The coming of Christ is both a day of judgment and a day of promise. Two candles flickering brightly help us remember that the coming of Christ has many meanings. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. Light two candles, see them glow brightly so that all may know how two candles show the way, making our darkness as bright as God's day. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. Let us pray. Dear God, we have much to do and we are not sure that we will be ready for the day of your coming. In Advent's light, Help us to see what is important, to be who you want us to be, and to do what you would have us do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So it is a pleasure to be here with you this morning as we usually sit in the congregation and today we are uh, happy to be standing here to lead you in a time of worship. And I don't know how you feel today. Do you feel a little bit tired? Do you feel cold? Do you feel a bit worn out? (laughs) Sometimes that's how we arrive at worship. But it's good to know we are in the presence of God and we can just relax now in his presence and in the presence of each other. And although it's a bit sad that the masks are hiding us, but in a way we are smiling to each other this morning. Is it not so? We are smiling to say, welcome, I'm happy you are here today. 
and we look at each other in the eye and say, I'm so pleased that you could make it today to worship. So feel welcome in our midst today. And we also welcome, of course, the Lord. He is the center of all that we do and why we are here this morning. So we're going to do it a little bit differently because we wanted to play with the bands because yesterday as we were standing there outside, it was freezing cold. <laughs> and poor, poor Major Mike is, is ill today. He caught a cold because the wind was really cruel yesterday. But it was also lovely to be there in the, in the street, in the main streets uh, with all the little shops to, to play and to remind people of what this is all about. This rushing back and forth is actually about waiting to celebrate Christmas. So as we were playing there outside, and uh, Massimo and myself love Advent and we love to play the carols, we were also suddenly thinking, well, it would be nice instead of playing with the piano today to, to have the band accompany the carols. So I will go and join the others so that we are four. I forgot to ask Major Evan if you were playing. We could have asked you to help. <laughs> but uh, so I'm going to join and you will see the words and just go through the, through the, the uh, how do you say, the verses. <clears throat> Not quite sure how many they are. I forgot to check that. But if we need a break, we will just lift our hands and say, wait for us. <laughs> and so I'm going to sit there, and we are going to sing together, as with gladness, men of old. And I hope that today we come with gladness, as Major Rebecca has said. With gladness, we come to worship the Lord.
So that is always the privilege of the people who prepare the meeting, is to choose their own favorites. And so we are going to sing another carol now before having a time of prayer where you can lift up your voice and in your own uh, words say what you want to thank God for today and how you want to adore and worship him. But this song is about see the mid the winter snow, and I, I love it. You know, for us, it's, English is not our mother tongue. You, you realize that. You hear that. And um, we have been playing the carols in Germany, in Switzerland, in Italy. So it's nice for us to be actually in the country where those carols originated and to be able to sing them and not only play them. Now today I have to play, I can't sing, but it's beautiful words. And many times the carols have a deep theological meaning and teaching. And this is amazing that even in our time today, people who don't really know much about Jesus are reminded every year about what Jesus came to do. So let's sing this, uh, this carol and then we can have a moment of free prayer. Just feel free to get up and say your prayer in your language if that's easier and let us worship the Lord together.
Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being here today together. And yes, we want to include in our prayers those who have not been able to come today, those who are feeling uh, ill or who are feeling lonely and not up to meeting other people. We pray that your presence will be with them right now, that they will feel that you are there, you are caring for them, and you extend your hand on them. Thank you because you are also here in our midst, and you have prepared something for each one of us to receive in our hearts today through the words of the songs, through the words we will hear later in the message, through that which we are thinking in our hearts as we are listening, you are speaking yourself to us, giving us what we need for today. So we thank you and we praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. So is the video going to work? Is it going to work? Okay, we will try and hopefully it will work. Sorry about that. This is the techniques. I hope it works. Otherwise, we'll just have to do without. mysteries. No. I'm not sure. Yeah, we could try just to have the music. It's a beautiful song that I discovered some years ago on a CD that was lying around in our house and I hadn't even listened to it. So we'll just try to capture the words of this song.
your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great and inspired words and it's so true Mary as she had this little baby in her arms she had no idea although she had been told that he would be the one to save his people but she had no idea what that meant and I like some of the sentences in that song that says the one that you've delivered will soon deliver you and also when it says the little one you're kissing you're kissing the face of God isn't that amazing? And then that she holds that baby, but in reality, he is the great I am. So this is fascinating. And I think many times we are near the divine and we don't realize it. We don't realize it at all. And this morning, I just want to leave that thought with you. Because each one of us is a precious creature of God, when we meet each other and we look at each other's faces and eyes, actually, in a certain mysterious way, we're looking into the face of God, right? Because he created us and he loved us. And in many, many of us today, I'm sure, he lives in our hearts. And so when we see each other, meet each other, talk with each other, there is this holy reverence of meeting someone who is a precious child of God. So may this thought be with us as we go into this time of Advent again and again, reminding ourselves we are preparing our hearts. But in reality, Jesus is already here, and Jesus is already at work, and his prevenient grace is already in our midst. And when we meet each other, we meet each other in his name. This is a beautiful thought. So we are going to sing now again, and it's called, uh, a song called Once in Royal David City. And as we play it with the band and you sing it, we can then bring our offering to the front, as we are used to do. So please feel free to do that while we sing this song, this next song together.
seem to be going around <laughs> in circles, but uh, <clears throat> that's part of going live, huh? If <laughs> we have to go through uh, recorded meetings for uh, uh, a length of time, and everything was perfect. But uh, now it's going to be perfect because the Lord is in our midst, and uh, He, with His Spirit, is working in our hearts. I would like to read uh, uh, some verses from the book of Isaiah. Chapter 1, um, I will read from verse 2 to verse 4, and then from verse 11 to verse 20. Hear me, you heavens, listen, earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared, 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 <laughs> children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its master, the donkeys, the donkey its owner's manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me? Says the Lord, I have more than enough of burnt offering, of rams and the fats of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals, I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I'm not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now. Let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. May God bless his word for us. Let's pray. Lord, we want to bring this word that you have shared with uh, your people so many years ago to us today and understand what you uh, want to tell even to us today what we can uh, learn of these passages and what they can do in our lives we thank you lord because you are the same as at that time today and your desire is to invite you into your presence and experience from your grace so lead us in our minds and thoughts and words to the benefit of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Christmas has been for me a, a sort of a personal work in progress. As a child, I would rather wait for January the 6th when according to the Italian tradition, Almost at the end of the Christmas school break, the day of the Epiphany, presents would suddenly appear under the tree. It was not Father Christmas, but an old lady, the Befana, as we call it in Italy. Her name is a distortion of the word Epiphany, who would bring presents to children. 
and also black um, coal if you had been not very good and white if you had been good. So you can imagine, I'll let you imagine what kind of color I got most of the time. You seem to know. <laughs> After I had a personal encounter with Jesus and experienced an amazing change in my life, Christmas gained uh, a new meaning. I had joined uh, an uh, itinerant evangelistic tent ministry and can recall the band rehearsing Christmas songs for the celebration we were going to have uh, on Christmas uh, Day. And songs such as O Holy Night and What Child Is This? became my favorites. I was brought into a new dimension. I knew what it meant. I had experienced it. But I think it was during our service uh, years in Germany that I experienced uh, what I would call an expansion, an extension with the whole Advent atmosphere that gave a completely new twist to my approach to Christmas, realizing that the waiting was just as important as the day of the celebration, receiving, reviving my memories and giving them new understanding. So my thoughts would go back to my childhood's memories. You see, the nativity scene first created with, the, with live characters by Francis of Assisi is very rooted in the Italian culture. Scenes of different sizes can be seen in the sitting rooms of most Italian households. My father used to build one of about two square meters, uh, which would be uh, 6.3 feet. Just for those who... Uh, <laughs> with, uh, with all the characters mentioned in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, it was a scene rich in details with workshops spread all around the, the, the scene. The blacksmith, the butcher with sausages and pieces of meat displayed on the counter, children playing, and the woman hanging her washing on a line. Water would uh, run from one part to the other of the, of the scene. And angels and the shepherds, then the lights illuminating the village and the sky and the kings approaching from the far hills as days went by and finally reaching the stable once the holy family would be placed with little newborn Jesus in the cradle. Everything gave a sense of movement, excitement, and a fervor sense apart from two of the characters on the scene, the ox and the donkey. Everyone looked as being involved in a frenetic activity of some sort, but not them. I must say it was love at first sight for me. But I soon came to realize that my favorite characters were actually never mentioned in the nativity stories. Have you ever realized that? It was only years later that I found out where they sort of came out from. And although their main role was to provide warmth to the child, I soon realized that they had a strong symbolic meaning and a lesson to teach. If we go back to our Bible passage for this morning, we find the mention of these two animals right at the beginning and what they stand for. Isaiah 1 verse 3 says, the ox knows its master, the donkey its owner's manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. As most of you probably know, the whole history of the people of Israel has been marked by the lack of knowledge and understanding to which Isaiah refers to. The words of verse 3 emphasize what the prophet Hosea had said years before, I taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by their arms, but they did not know that I healed them. And in spite of the fact that they had experienced God as the one who provides 
and called him Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides throughout their history, from the Exodus on, they would look elsewhere for protection and provision. Or as Isaiah would say, it in mangers owned by others. Why? Because they did not understand their, their uniqueness and identity in the God who had rescued and called them, and therefore constantly tried to affirm their identity by being like the other nations. They did so in things pertaining religion, when from the very start they trusted in what could be seen, the golden calf, and then the different pagan divinities, instead of what could be testified of the power of the great I am, the way he had parted the water, the manna, the victories we have heard even recently in the story of Gideon. Politically, they asked for a king. The clouds during the day and the column of fire showing them the way through the night were not enough. They needed a king who should administer justice and lead them to battle. But their request was a clear rejection of the lordship of Yahweh. And culturally, the customs of the people around them seemed easier to follow. Why shouldn't they have a free society with no restrictions? Their sense of belonging was wanting something that went beyond any external and painful ceremony. And finally, socially. One could say that at times the prophets could really be pain in the neck. With all their calls to a society where justice was not an option, where each person independently from their status was worthy of respect and even support in times of need. The laws of Yahweh written on stone had proved to be too difficult to be followed. The obedience to such a law exemplified by the oaks and the donkey was a goal too high to be reached. And the burden of knowing that one's life dependent, depended from the obedience to that law led everyone to a, a constant sense of condemnation, to say the least, or to altogether rejection of that law. They had failed. As the Apostle Paul said, although the law in itself is good, my behaviors only emphasize my inability to do what is good. But in the, nativ in the nativity scene, the whole emphasis is different. The example of the oaks and the donkey used by Isaiah has completely changed. There is no frantic activity to please the impossible. There is no movement to fulfill a written law, a law written on stones. But there is peace. Peace reigns in that scene, in an atmosphere of grace. We see that it is love that compels the different characters to draw near to the newborn king. It's not the law. It's not the, the conviction that one must do something to be accepted, but it is an invitation. And they draw closer to the newborn king. A new era has been inaugurated, an era that has been anticipated by the words of the prophet Ezekiel. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their hearts of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then, only then, they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. Did you hear that? Then, then, and only then, they will follow and keep the law. What was made impossible by a heart of stone is now made possible by a new heart capable of receiving the Spirit. Through the words, 
becoming flesh and making his dwelling among us, as John's Gospel tells us in chapter 1, verse 14, the grace and the truth emanating from his presence are given to all those who would come into that stillness and know that he is God. The impossible has been made possible, not out of our efforts, but through the Spirit dwelling and actively working in us, helping us to follow not a law written on stone, but yielding to the compelling love that transforms our beings to his image, making us ambassadors of this miracle of grace and allowing us to be obedient to the voice of the Spirit in us. Isn't this what Jesus told the woman at the well? It is not a matter of where or what kind of rules we seek after to worship God, but by allowing the Spirit of grace to make us able to be followers. All that Jesus has come to do, his birth, his ministry and sacrifice, his resurrection, only have value for us if we receive the new heart and the Holy Spirit that makes us new. As for Israel before, the tension is still present, present for us, and the temptation, although assuming new forms, is still as real for us as it was for Israel so many years ago. Wealth has become the god of our world, and the world wants our identity to be dependent on align, aligning ourselves to the trends, being accepted through compromises with the present culture. We seek after power, size, and fame, but make sure that they are clothed in spiritual garments. The size of our cores, our churches, the popularity of the preacher, how many members do we have? This is the way we want to be like the world around us. And it is amazing to see how often God works with the rest, with the remnant in his, in his word. We seek after power, size, and fame, but make sure that they are clothed in spiritual garments or words. Like for the shepherds who were terrified by the glory that shone on them, we may be fearful of what it means to enter in, the, in, in this place of peace and grace. But the assuring word of the angels are for us valid even today. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will create great joy for all the people the joy of transformation, a new heart, and the Spirit guiding us. Do we know this joy? Do you know this joy? In this time of the Advent, I invite you to be, I say this with all respect, oxen and donkeys. You know, on my uh, desk, I always I have a donkey to remind me of what it means in the Bible, in so many passages, to be a donkey. In this time of the, of the Advent, we want to be like, like oxen and donkeys, to not be pressed by all that goes around us, but find our place of peace by the manger, knowing our King and receiving from him, the grace and peace he offers. As my wife said earlier, we can be so close to uh, something that uh, has to do with God's presence and God's action and miss it. And I often think of uh, the king of Sodoma when uh, Abraham met Melchizedek and he thought he could give him part of his richness because he had rescued him 
And Abraham said, I will have nothing to do with that. And he recognized in Melchizedek the presence of God. And I always thought, what would have happened in the life of the king of Sodom if he had realized that he had come so close to a spiritual reality? If he had uh, received that experience, I think the story of uh, the history of Sodom would have gone in a completely different direction. And we can come so often close to, uh, that's why I say let's try to be oxen and donkeys in this time. We can be so close to Jesus and what God is doing and we can miss it because we are distracted. So let's come into the presence of Christ and in this time and recognize that he is our peace and that there is grace there for us. Amen. So as usually, my wife has been doing this for 38 years. It's working? Can we hear the, the sound? We'll just wait a couple of seconds, if it works. So this is uh, part of the international staff songsters, uh, and they sing, come into our world from Joy Web. And, uh, and we thought we would share this as a, as a special. But, um, <clears throat> I, w I would rather invite you to uh,
thank you, Lord, for uh, inspiring people to write uh, poems and songs that touch our hearts, like this one that we have just heard. And yet, there is a sense in which we don't need to ask you to come into our world because you have come and you have made the difference in our lives. And there is another sense in which we need to pray that prayer again and again. Come into the world of so many people who are in desperation, in need, in ignorance, who are looking for uh, nourishment, emotional, spiritual, social, in things that will never satisfy them. We ask you to come in those situations and as we pray that prayer, we realize that you call us to be <clears throat> you in those situations, to bring hope to this world. And so, again, this morning, we ask you to uh, equip us, open our eyes and our ears to the situations around us and be obedient to your voice. And if there is someone here this morning who has not yet come to that place of peace and grace, we pray that you continue to speak to them through your spirit and you will attract them to you so that they may be uh, completely free from uh, a sense of condemnation for the inability to follow you by their own strength and that they will see and receive from you a new heart, and be filled by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> we have a, a closing song, and then the announcements are going to be after. Are there? Okay. We have the announcement now? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I knew... <laughs> Welcome everyone once again this morning. Um, uh, Lubo, um, you joining us for the first time, but you're looking for help this morning, so welcome to the Salvation Army. Um, isn't it wonderful to have the band accompany me today? It's really brought wonderful memories for me. So thank you, thank you for that today. Um, welcome to the Hickmans, um, um, to, welcome to Catford, and you work with the Tusis. So that's wonderful, and your neighbors as well, how wonderful. So hopefully they'll persuade you to come back to Catford again. So welcome, thank you. Good to see Carol and Rolick, um, and one or two, Peggy again, we haven't seen you for a while, and the lady who came last week, so wonderful to see you once again this week. So just a few announcements. Um, we've had to cancel the open house plan uh, meeting that was gonna be at the core quarters because of the current situation with the coronavirus situation and the new variant, so we just need to be safe. So we're going to cancel that. Um, thank you for all those who were able to come out yesterday for the caroling. Um, we had a wonderful time um, sharing carols with the local community. I met two people who've had previous connections with the Salvation Army, and they were really delighted to see us, and they said we should see more of the Army out there. Um, so that was really wonderful. They, they had previous connections with the Army, and us being out there really blessed them on that particular day. Um, we will be having our carol service on Sunday the 19th and also um, our Christmas jumper celebration. So I'm, I'm off to Primark very soon to get my one. Um, so just remember that. That's, so that's on Sunday the 19th of um, December. Uh, we will be having a Christmas Day service as per usual. That will be from 10.30. But on Sunday, Boxing Day, there's no meeting. So just to remind you of that. Um, Please remember those in our core family that are far from well. Um, you might remember them. So, um, Paolo, um, Nick, John, 
Gracia, Monica. So please remember them in your prayers, or one or two that I might have left out, but please do remember them. We normally share uh, them in our WhatsApp group. Um, some of you might remember Joe Baldwin, who worshipped with us for many years. He's now living in lovely Wales um, because we've been to visit him, so it's a lovely place they are, so I'd like to live there one day. But anyway, he turned 101 um, today, so how wonderful is that? So um, we just celebrate that his birthday today. Um, today's flower ministry is from Major Eileen. Um, it's to mark her for what would have been a 47th wedding anniversary with her husband who said they passed away a few years ago. Please do join us for tea and coffee after the meeting and have a wonderful week and that's all the announcements and I'll lead the last song. I'm not a very good singer but uh, let's see. <laughs> Are the words coming up? <laughs> Ah, there we go. Oh, it's my favorite one. I can sing this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, shall we stand and sing, actually, for our last song? Mm-hmm. Welcome. Do you mind just... Yep. Yeah. Okay. So if you're able to stand up, please stand for our last song. Joy to the have the benediction. <clears throat> we have the benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.